hope this is recording. Good afternoon, good morning, classmates, cohorters, P Professor Crawford, and everybody receiving this content. Um, I think I figured something out. Sorry for the um, delay. I had technical difficulties. I've been trying to figure something out. Um, this is my course presentation lecture on understanding media by McLaurin and Gordon. My name is Yaradan Carrington, and you know, I'm a third year doctoral, stud um, doctoral student studying communications. Um, my presentation will be on movies and radio, which is chapters 29 and 30 of McLuhan. Um, well, I know time is of the essence. Let me get started. Um, a summary of this, this lecture is basically a hot medium is a media that needs very little input to bridge a gap, whereas a cold medium needs participation from an audience or another individual to bridge, to build a, a message, storyline, or plot. A high definition medium contains all the necessary information a viewer will need to understand the content broadcast, whereas a cold or cool medium is a media that uses interactions with others as a tool to convey the message or present the message that's needed. It is a low definition medium due to, to unclear forms, shapes, and images whereas little information is perceived and others are needed to fill in the inf missing information. So basically a hot medium will have all the content necessary information that's necessary for someone to understand what is being broadcast or conveyed to others whereas a cold or cool medium needs you know others to participate to fill in the information you know to see like what they grasp what they, what they caught with their eye what they found within the content all right McLuhan provided some examples on a, in his editor's introduction on page 17 with the differences of a cool medium and a hot medium. A cool medium is telephone, speech, cartoons, television, seminars, whereas a hot medium is radio, print, photography, um, movies, and lectures. Now my presentations are 29 and 30 which are two hot mediums, radio and um, movies. Well, let me start and begin with chapter 29, which, are, which is on movies. Now, movies are hot medium. Like I said, both of them are hot mediums. Movies are hot medium would present a message in its content through a storyline, theme, setting, plot, or scenes. It's a high definition medium. As McLuhan expressed, it gives a lot of information and requires little of the user. Movies have a special way of conveying messages to both non-literate and literate people. Movies has a lot of information. I mean, like it, it, it just you know people had to just pay attention to grasp what's being go what's being said, going on the different scenes, the plots, and you know that that's what makes it hot because it has it's hot it has all that content within it. You just have to pay attention. Um, a non-literate person registers very little interest in this kind of efficient cause and effect but are fascinated by hidden forms that produce magical results whereas a literate individual recognizes the cause and effects of a content perceived in logical order as it is continuously presented throughout the storyline and various scenes so basically a non-literate person would um grasp certain images or certain scenes or content within a movie and they will piece it together like connect the dots whereas a literate person they will follow the movie logically knows being said from scene to scene or get the message within the content or what's being conveyed throughout the whole movie they will follow it now movies as an active metaphor I compared it to as a flower as McLuhan did within the book it's the flourishment of a flower as a seed breaking through fresh soil into its germination stage and sprout into the growth of a beautiful flower. The storyline of this flower will conclude 
as the plot of the pollution stage shown in its own seeds ending in a seed spreading stage to begin another generation of the same species flower. So it's like, you know, a flower breaking through soil and it grows, it, the stem grows and comes up and as you know, it flourishes, it starts opening up its petals, the growth of a movie or the movie industry, I should say in general. At this time of the print, McLuhan expressed movies as a nonverbal form of experience or like photography, a form of statement without syntax. In fact, however, like the print and the photos, movies assume a high level of literacy in their users and prove baffling to non-literate. So basically he's saying the same thing. Movies, the, the literate will understand it. They they will they will follow the whole the whole content. Whereas the non-literate, they will not understand it. They will find it you know confusing. They will grasp certain information. It might turn into a cold medium to a non-literate person where they will need input or feedback from a literate person or somebody else to gain exactly what they miss or you know that type of content today movies are motion picture films with audio and storyline that a literate or non-literate person can't understand because it's motion pictures at one point in time it was still films so they was like they was looking at pictures and they was just moving slowly if they would you know and it had a narrator which will um you know explain what's going on within the content Moving along to chapter 30, which is radio, and it's another hot cock, another hot medium. McLuhan clarified radio is the rich area of preliterate vitality, felt the hot impact of radio. The message of radio is one of violent, unified inclusion and renaissance. Radio was originally created as a tool of propaganda during wars. When Germany was defeated in North Africa for attempting to control African resources during World War II, Adolf Hitler he used radio as a tool to address the Nazis of their current state during the war and to threaten Russians, threaten them to go to war. So basically, radio evolved as a tool of propaganda to you know, persuade people to follow their lead, whoever was control, whoever was broadcasting, like for instance, the Nazis or Germany, they would use it to um, basically tell the innocent people or citizens of a land that's being occupied to follow our rule. Disobey the people that you're under; they might be, you know, misleading you, and follow us. We mean no harm. It was used as propaganda broadcasting messages. It was no music, no disc jockeys, just somebody telling you what to do or how to follow your life follow their lifestyle or their leadership for your life to lead your lifestyle. Um however radio as an active metaphor I perceive as an invention and evolution of radio similar to the memory forfeits of a butterfly. Radio was born as a tool for propaganda to manipulate innocent people, whereas butterflies are born as eggs attached to a leaf until it hatched into a larva or caterpillar. A larva and caterpillar looks at just as scary as propaganda sound on broadcast radio, staring, guilty, guilt, staring innocent people for guilty pleasure. However, the growth into a pupa shows the organization of radio programming the final stages of a butterfly illustrating its beauty and colors are comparable to today's radio programming format. Alright, so now radio, I compared it to a butterfly because a butterfly, it don't look too pretty at first. You know, it, it hangs from the tree, it might have cobwebs or even like, you know, something all around it until it hatches. And when it hatches, it hatches into a, a a caterpillar. A caterpillar, you know, they have plenty of feet and they move fast. So radio evolved as a medium 
to mislead people. It was used as a as a message board to um to make people follow a certain lead, just to control their land, their country, and you know have them abide by their laws, somebody's laws and re regulations. But as it evolved, you know it hatched. People gained control of it and learned this power. And as it flourished into like a butterfly, you begin to have formats of music, this jockeys, and you know, basically like different like territories and markets, which is, you know, my active metaphor. All right, um, moving along. Due to the use of radio's early stages of propaganda and other uses of for war, it was an extremely hot, harsh, and aggressive medium to use. The advancement of commercial radio and other types of private radio pl platforms enable programmers to provide uncut and uncensored content to viewers of age. However, radio was created, created the disc jockeys, and it evolved, evaluated the gag writer into a major national role since the advent of radio. The gag was supplanted the joke not because a gag writer, but because radio is a fast, hot medium that has also rationed the reporters' space for stories. All right. Mm -hmm. um, right. Like I said, you know, radio started from propaganda and evolved until, you know, this beautiful world that we have right now with different formats and different markets. And, you know, it, it evolved from commercial radio to satellite radio, internet radio, um, we have college radio and audio auto streaming services, which you know it provides people their own listening experience or you know according to their taste buds, and it also you know created a disc jockey, somebody that could you know entertain you, give you news. And then you have the gag writers, you know people that you know provide content, entertaining content. Um, things you know just for to um, entertain those and keep your attention program all right however today many organizations do not simulcast television on radio programming due to its language content and perception of both mediums this method actors use on television are a reference to person-to-person -person interactions which will sound very different on a non-verbal, non-visual platform like radio due to the perception of content on this particular type of medium. Now, when radio, when, when, when radio was first starting to like gain this, like this format when DJs, you know, when DJs evolved with radio, they, they was starting to, you know, have soap operas on radio. They 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 had different content to keep people basically tuned to their programming. And this is right before television. So they was basically, you know, the content was a little different than content today. And as television evolved, similar soap operas and, and shows that was on radio evolve onto television in which they end up you know they end up talking to each other in the, in the words is basically the, their language is different they, they were expressing themselves the way they, they address each other was different because there's a visual content that shows one how they talking who they talking to the reaction of somebody if somebody was to walk in the door they know somebody walking the door. If there was a joke, you know, you could see the gestures and everything. If it was on radio, they would be talking a little different so you could capture the jokes, the content, the, the drama within the content. So that's the difference. But today, it's totally different because we have television. We have plenty, plenty of television. Like, there's plenty of radio formats. There's plenty of television formats different markets, different types of television, and, you know, it evolved 
to where it is today. Um, I hope I'm still within time. I thank you very much for um, your understanding, dealing with me, my my difficult, my technical difficulties, and you know. And I hope you enjoyed my content, my my, my lecture, and hopefully, um, you know, I'll be looking forward to your feedback. Thank you.